Hi folks, it's Evil here from Thundermus Lure Company and welcome to today's episode of Thundermus Fishing Tips. We're out here in Lake Erie, it's actually July, it's early morning, uh, but it's a cold front came through. It's a bit cold this morning, so I'm going to leave the jacket on at least for a little while. And today folks, what we're going to do, we're going to be casting crankbaits for smallmouth bass. And uh, what I'm running today folks, I've got 100% fluorocarbon line. I've got eight pound test fluorocarbon and uh, I'm running it down to a uh, to a frog type lure uh, that I'm working this morning a little crankbait it's a little frog crankbait and uh, bass love frogs it's it is one of the best crankbait type lures you could use I mean if you run uh, live frogs for bass you'll have a great day on the water but uh, artificial crankbait or an artificial frog is the next best thing and that's what I'm going to run this morning. And all I've got is a single snap snapped onto, uh, onto my frog lure. And I don't need a snap swivel because it doesn't spin, it's just wobbling. And quite simply, cast it out, rod tip pointed down, it's not a very deep diver. I'm fishing in a boat. Oh, actually, there's a hit right there folks. Oh, I just lost him. <laughs> I just lost him. Maybe I can uh, re-hook them up again. Uh, I was saying I was just fishing in about 10 feet of water. See, there might be another one around. I doubt he'll hit again, but... Well, that didn't take long. Yeah, I'm fishing at 10 feet and I've got my rod tip pointed down because this frog lure does not dive that deep. Uh, it's a shallow dive in, so it's gonna dive down about five, six feet with my rod tip up down. With my rod tip up higher, it's gonna dive maybe three feet. So. That's going to be the strategy today. It's a beautiful morning. There's no boats out here, at least not yet. So it looks like, uh, you know, I'm just fishing out of here out of Fort Erie, but uh, on Lake Erie on the Eastern Basin, and I've got this whole lake to myself right now. So that's kind of nice. Like I say, it's early morning. I've already had one uh, one hit and miss, and I'm hoping to have a great time on the water. This one hit right at the boat, folks. Oh, he just, he hit it right at the boat, just as it was, just as my lure was ready to come out of the, out of the water, he just hammered it right at the boat. <laughs> I saw the whole thing. Oh, that was pretty good. That's a nice sized bass too, a decent size anyway. He's under the boat. Oh, it's just an average size. They always look bigger, bigger in the water. Okay, he's still pretty green though. Okay, let's get him in. Okay. Oh, he just come out. Look at that. He just came off the lure right there. How's that for a net job right there? <laughs> That's an average size smallie right there. Oh, if I can get him. Come on, Mr. Bass. There we go. That's your average size Lake Erie bass right there. That's about, always about two pounds. Not very big, but uh, beautiful fish. He gave me a nice hit, real nice hit. Drop him back in there and uh, where there's one, there's typically more. And the other reason why I like this, this frog lure t this morning, folks, is because with that cold front coming in, I'm looking for some aggressive fish with this crankbait, but uh, I've downsized. That, that frog is a small lure, and that's the thing. If you've got a cold front coming in, just, uh, just go a little smaller with your baits and, and go a little bit slower. I'm cranking a little bit slower this morning, and, uh, and you'll be able to entice that, uh, that bite, even though it's a cold front and the fish might not be as aggressive or active, you can still entice a bite with smaller baits and a little more finesse. There's another good fish, folks. Another good hit, another good fish. What a day I'm having out here today, folks. It's unbelievable. The action. These fish are just attacking this crankbait and they're really, really aggressive. Oh yeah, this one's peeling too. I don't know where else you could have this much fun. I'm fishing the, a rocky area just off a point, and that's where the bass like to be held, like to hold in those rocky areas, and they're easy to find. If you've got some points around, typically a point, there's typically rocks off of a point, and the sure is here. Okay, he's not very big. Oh, come on. He's still taking drag. Okay. There we go. That's a nice fish. 
Nice, chunky, healthy, smallmouth bass right there. One little hook into them there. There we go. There's another nice fish right there. Let's get him back in and I need to get my line back out. Another solid hit, folks, another solid hit. Oh, oh I better back off on the drag. He's swimming right to the boat. <laughs> oh, this is, this is great, folks. The morning bite. I love running crankbaits in the morning. It's an aggressive bite and a great bite. I also like running crankbaits in the in the evening because the fish are also aggressive in the evening and very active. But you know what, folks? Wow. They're also, with this chop on the water today, these bass are going to be active all day long. And I am definitely going to be out here all day long because this is a riot. It's another nice bass. Oh. What a beautiful fish. Come on, Mr. Smalley, give it up. There we go, finally. Another chunk, folks. These are nice, chunky, smallmouth bass. Right there. That's another nice Lake Erie bass right there, folks. Good solid two and a half right there. Real nice fish. Gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Gave me a nice fight. I absolutely love it. Oh, folks, that was a that was a fantastic hit. And did he ever come barreling out like a torpedo? I love that crankbait bite. It's so exciting. You never know when you're going to get a hit. Oh, this is a good fish. <laughs> it's a decent fish. You never know when you're going to get a hit. And it's so exciting when they do hit. They just hammer it really hard. Oh, man, this is a decent fish, folks. What? What an acrobatic though, as soon as he hit and I set the hook, he came right out of the water and gave me a nice show. Wow, he's strong. These, these smallmouth are strong fish. He's going under the boat. Okay, Let's see if I can, whoa, Let's see if I can get him in here. Come on, Mr. Bass, there we go. There's a nice smallmouth, folks, right here. That one's a little bigger than the other one. He's pushing three and a half right there, folks. An honest three and a half. Oh, he was hooked well, too. One little treble right in there. That's a solid, that's a solid three and a half pounder. Or a solid, let's say three. An honest three. But what a beautiful fish and a nice hit. He just hammered that crankbait, folks. Hammered it. Okay, let's get him back in there. And that's what I like is so exciting about these crankbaits. It's always anticipation. You cast it out there and you're just anticipating that hit. And you never know when it's going to actually happen. But when it does, it's really exciting. They hit it hard. And uh, the other reason I like to use this fluorocarbon or monofilament when I'm cranking, when they hit, you need that little bit of hesitation. And uh, with the mono or the fluorocarbon, you get that little bit of stretch. And with that stretch, it allows that little bit of hesitation when you go to set the hook, and it makes a big difference. So having said that, if you are using braided line and you want to stick with it, or that could be the only reel you have and it's spooled up with braided line, then what I would suggest you do, folks, is just add an extra long leader line on the tail end. So maybe a 15 to 20 foot long monofilament or fluorocarbon leader, and that should be enough to give you that stretch that you need for that hook set. But right now, that was so exciting. I, I gotta try and get myself another one of those fish. That was a real nice smallmouth. Not that I don't mind catching those little ones, but that was a decent fish. Oh, there we go. There's another one right there, folks. Like I said, oh, he come out of the water. Oh my goodness, he come barreling out, folks. Just barreling, barreling out of the water. And oh, there he is again. Oh, he's splashing. Now, that's the other thing now. Here he is here. When you're fighting these bass, if you want to try to avoid the jump, point your rod tip down. Oh, he's going under the boat. They like to go under the boat today. Point your rod tip down, and that'll keep the bass. Oh, that'll keep the bass. It'll try to keep them down anyhow. You might not be able to, but if you keep your rod tip down, you got a better chance of him not jumping coming back around. 
It's another nice fish, folks. Yes, it is. Oh, he's taking drag here. Oh, I love that crankbait bite. <laughs> this is this is a riot, folks. Like I said, I'm out here on Lake Erie. Oh, there's a, another boat finally joined us, but I had the whole place to myself here. That's just fantastic. Normally, you got to go way up north or out in cottage country to have that type of peace and tranquility. But oh, he's taking one last jump here. Wow, he does not want to give up, folks. He does not want to give up. Okay, there's another nice bass. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Heavy fish. He's another three pounder. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah, look at that fish. Isn't that a nice fish? Maybe two and a half. Okay, two and a half to three. But that's a real nice fish. He's got both trebles in him, actually. I think what I'm going to do is just get the needle nose, just to help me a bit. Just to help me a bit to get these hooks out. They're both kind of tangled together in there. There's the one. There's the other. Okay, no worse for wear, Mr. Smalley. Another nice Lake Erie bass right there, folks. Not as big as that last one, but still a very, very nice fish. Okay. And back in he goes. Folks, I don't know. It's morning. The crankbait bite is on. Yes, there's a cold front that moved in. I've just downsized a bit. Slower retrieve. And uh, having some fun with some bass. The crankbait bite, folks, it's so easy to do. Anyone can do it. You're basically, all you're doing is casting out and cranking in. And uh, sure, you can retrieve your crank, your, your, you can change up your retrieves a bit, but basically, very simple, cast and retrieve. Even for, uh, for kids who wanna get out and have some fun, it's very, very simple to do. So if you get an opportunity, folks, give crankbaits a try. All you need is a single snap. Snap one on, cast it out, retrieve. And I hope you get yourself in for a great day on the water. I'm sure having one right now. And I want to thank you so much, as always, for tuning in to today's episode of Thunderous Fishing Tips. And until next time, good luck and good fishing. Fish. Oh, yes. There's a large wolf right there, folks. There's a chunk right there. <laughs> There's a... <laughs>